rien de rien. What do you feel when you hear this song? If you've seen the movie Inception, I doubt there's anything else that pops into your mind as you listen to it. And the movie was directed by Christopher Nolan, whose film style is as distinct as any. His movies are these elaborate thought experiments, these carefully constructed worlds, each with a unique set of rules that allow him to play with the rules of time and space and explore the concepts of memory and identity. Nolan's obsession, his wonkiness, is what makes his art so distinct. And his movies have grossed more than $5 billion, and he's been nominated for multiple Oscar awards, mostly in praise of his mastery of visual effects, beautiful establishing shots, and gripping action sequences. And as creators, we can learn from his wonkiness to get better at our craft. When I say wonky, I'm describing somebody who has an obsessive interest in the nitty gritty details of a particular subject. Wonky people are willing to explore a niche so deeply that they become experts on detail that other people won't even bother with. And by the time that Nolan was ready to create Inception, he had already developed the reputation of a brilliant director. He asked his visual effects designer, Chris Corbel, and his go-to production designer, to build him a colossal steel contraption, which melded together with seven steel rings, each 30 feet in diameter. And every ring was placed 16 feet along the hallway and rotated by a 55 horsepower electric motor. The result was this amazing centrifugal hallway set. And then just as you start to soak in the near absurdity of Nolan's demands, you realize that there was also a whole other vertical corridor made separately, which used wires to manipulate how actors moved up and down the set. And all this took three weeks to shoot. And when I went back to look at the script for Inception, this part of the movie was only just a paragraph and a half of the script, and it only corresponded to 30 seconds of screen time. It's this level of obsession and work ethic that attracts people to Christopher Nolan, and it's why actors dream of working with him too. And this wonkiness is what makes Christopher Nolan's movies so memorable. Like an Escher drawing, his films are complicated puzzles that are built to confuse and perplex viewers that he assumes are both resourceful and hyper-intelligent. And by making things difficult for the viewer, he forces them to think. And that's why your experience with the Christopher Nolan movie begins when you leave the theater. Because after that, when you're walking to the car or something, that's when you really begin to work out the plot details, maybe by talking to friends or engaging with random people on Reddit. But because of their one-of-a-kind wonkiness, Nolan's movies have attracted a cult-like fan base. You know, you might remember the way that Inception became a cult favorite where people discuss their theories of the movie nonstop, and especially the way it ended. And if you were on YouTube at the time, you probably heard this sound effect used everywhere for remotely any dramatic point in a video. It's this type of wonkiness that we should emulate as creators. Since the creator economy is polluted with noise, we need a way to differentiate ourselves. Otherwise, we'll publish our work to nothing but crickets of indifference. I've learned that the best way to stand out on the internet is to be wonky. And if you're not fascinated by what you're writing about, you're not going to be unique and you're definitely not going to become a world-class creator. If you're chasing a fashionable trend, you've already lost because you'll always be competing with those who are more obsessed than you are. But let's look at an example of wonkiness in writers with one of my personal favorites, David Foster Wallace. His writing is famously confusing and fragmented, giving each reader the sensation of stepping into a technicolor world with a level of detail that shocks me awake whenever I read it. He rejects the linear style of classical writers like Leo Tolstoy because it no longer speaks to the chaotic, dreamlike qualities of modern life. Because now we no longer do one thing at a time. And with the internet at our fingertips and information that zips around the world at the speed of light, we're always task switching and playing hopscotch on the playground of information abundance. See, Wallace doesn't really have an interest in reaching the widest possible audience. He wants obsessive, smart readers, and he's willing to do some time consuming and maybe even suboptimal things to make that happen and to serve his craft. 
For his last book, The Pale King, which chronicles the experience of tax employees, David Foster Wallace transcribed notes on tax scams, enrolled in accounting classes at Illinois State University, and read wonky books like The Reluctant Taxpayer, What the IRS Doesn't Want You to Know, and The U.S. Income Tax, What It Is, How It Got That Way, and Where We Go From Here. And he knows that a book like Infinite Jest is a daunting commitment for his readers too, because of its whirling and dizzying and self-indulgent style. He knows that publishing a 1,079-page book makes intense demands on both his editor and his publishing house because of the increased cost of producing each book. But despite all of this, David Foster Wallace followed the path of wonkiness. On a side note, let me know in the comments below who your favorite wonky people are. Who are the people who you follow who are just obsessively curious about either weird or niche things? I'll make sure to reply to you guys down there. So getting wonky means that you're willing to get gritty in a niche and explore ideas that most people won't even touch. But how do you actually get wonky? Well, it starts with the right mindset. If you're going to get wonky, you can't worry about the productivity of your curiosity. Worrying too much about if there's a market for what you're saying will induce self-doubt and constrain your inherent curiosity. Wonkiness is a hard path to walk because it happens so independently. Ideally, there should be a few or maybe even nobody walking your same path, and this means that you can't expect other people to be always encouraging you forward. Now, that doesn't stop you from working with like-minded people or even from learning from others who are working in a similar area. But remember that the more mainstream your path, chances are the less wonky you're getting. So here's my recommendation. Start off in a popular domain, but let yourself explore the depths of it. Keep an eye out for things that other people aren't talking about. This is what I do when I get wonky about my favorite writers. Look outside the spotlight where others aren't looking. And that leads me to do things that are obsessive. For example, a lot of people know Marsh McLuhan. You know, the medium is the message guy, who is probably the most famous media theorist of all time. But people rarely talk about his intellectual influences. So when I read his book, Understanding Media, I went beyond reading just that book and started reading the writers who influenced him the most. I found the work of writers like Lewis Mumford and Harold Innes. And then I saw influences from historical figures like James Joyce and even St. Thomas Aquinas helped him weave his intellectual tapestry. And then I took all of those ideas and I wrote a 15,000 word essay called What the Hell is Going On? which used McLuhan's ideas to explain how shifts in information technology were influencing commerce, education, and politics. I went from studying McLuhan, a popular historical figure, to finding out the roots and the axioms that influenced both his work and his philosophy of life, to then writing a huge essay about his work that's still one of the most popular things I've ever published. As you can probably see, the process of developing your own wonky style, it isn't a rational one. You don't just sit down one day and think about all the ways that you're gonna become wonky. No, trying to find wonkiness is an intuitive process. It comes from trial and error and the relentless pursuit of individuality. And if you approach the pursuit of wonkiness using a top-down rational mindset, you're gonna end up getting stuck and actually limiting yourself. But when you trust your intuition, you end up in places that your mind would have never predicted or led you to. Become sensitive to the things that you're good at and enjoy doing. Pay attention to the things that make you extreme. And while the rest of the world will tell you to limit your quirks and become more normal, I say double down on your quirks, nurture them, and enjoy being wonky. Because the things that make other people call you weird are like the keys to the treasure chest of your own wonkiness. But because the internet is so good at matching people, wonky creators tap into what I call the paradox of specificity, where people who are wonky create more opportunities for themselves because they attract intellectually similar people that they would have never met otherwise. My favorite example of wonkiness gone right comes from Bill James. In the 1970s, he was working as a security guard at a Stokely Van Camp pork and beans factory. Back then, he was just a regular guy who loved the game of baseball. And in 1977, he published his first book with the great and exciting title of Baseball Abstract featuring 18 categories of statistical information that you just can't find anywhere else. To the average reader, it was insufferably boring, painfully precise, and way too wonky. But 
it attracted an obsessive readership. Research scientists, Wall Street analysts, math wizards, and university professors, all of them mail James their ideas, their criticisms, and their questions. But here's where things got real. That wonky old book was picked up by Billy Bean, who ran baseball operations for the Oakland A's baseball team. And that book served as the intellectual underpinning to the statistics revolution for Major League Baseball. And in 2006, Time Magazine named Bill James in the Time 100 as one of the most influential people in the world. And pop culture hasn't forgotten about him either. James made a guest appearance on the Simpsons episode called Money Bart, where he says, I made baseball as much fun as doing your taxes. And then there's the movie Moneyball, which stars Brad Pitt and builds upon Bill James's ideas as well. See, the key to James's influence was that he was wonky. He wrote about something that nobody else was writing about, and like a true wonk, he studied the statistics of baseball with a level of obsession the game had never seen before. As a creator, resist the pull to make things for the average. Keep experimenting even when that experimentation sends you in unexpected directions. To explore what is wonky is to reject what is for what could be. So as you think about Christopher Nolan and David Foster Wallace, remember that the internet uniquely rewards differentiation. Getting wonky is a way to differentiate yourself, but just because you're trying to stand out doesn't mean that you can't draw inspiration from others. In fact, I encourage you to build upon the work of other creators with a framework that I call imitate, then innovate which I explain in this video.